Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is Get Data Table Row? Get Data Table Row is one of two nodes that help you get information from a data table. Remember, data tables are read only, which means you can't edit them at runtime. We can only get the data from them once it's been created. Now if we type in get data table row, we're going to find it down here under utilities. And by default, it's going to look like this. You have to fill in a data table. This is the data table we need the information from because it's going to create the output structure based on the input data table structure. And then it's going to ask for a row name. Let's go ahead and pick, for example, our weapon data table. Once you pick a data table, your row names will actually autofill. So if I chose, for example, our student data table, we have some IDs. We chose the skills data table. We have some skill numbers. And our weapon data table actually has some numbers and a word because that's what I chose. If we look at our data table itself, for example, this is what we have. We have our row name, which is 0, 1, and long sword of doom. And then we have the information associated with each row. You will need to input the row name. We do have an input of a name variable, so we could put it or pull it from somewhere else. And it's going to output if it found it, didn't find it, and then if it found it, the information. So looking at our example here, if I grab our weapon table, I ask it for the long sword of doom as the row name, and I output from our row found a print string, I can grab the name because I'm opening up the structure here and print it out. So if we hit play, we find long sword of doom. As this is a row name and it is a variable, we can pull it in from anywhere else. So for example, I have an equipment right here and I have this as a map set up. So my character here is a map and I could do, for example, find. And if we look at him, we have a left hand and a right hand. So I'm going to ask him what's in his left hand. This is going to give me back an integer. Now, unfortunately, I need this to be a row name. Now, the way I've set this up is my output is a number. Now, I could have set this to a name. It might have been smarter. It actually probably would have been smarter. You know what? Let's change this too. Since our row name is a uh, name, let's go ahead and change our output to a name. That's what's nice. We can easily change this. We'll change this to a name. We'll go ahead and change the variable type. We'll go ahead and compile and save. And there we go. Unfortunately, I have no more equipment since I changed it. But it should be pretty simple. We'll add in two of them. We'll do left hand and left hand contains item zero and right hand contains item one now obviously they need to match up to be the appropriate names so let's see we're gonna find we'll go and find what's in our left hand and it's gonna output a name and we'll go ahead and put that into here like I said we can use variables so all this is gonna do is grab my equipment find out what's in my left hand because this is a map of left hand to a value and then print out the row name. And we hit play and we'll find Kelthalos is in my left hand or for example in our right hand which we're mapped to row name of one. Whoops, if I spelled right hand properly, let's try that again. That would have been fun to not work. Right hand. We'll hit play. We'll find my right hand has a dagger. Keep in mind it is a name input so it's whatever you have set up inside of your data table as your row name. In this case, I did zero, one, and long sword of doom. Just to show it's a name value, it could be whatever you want. Also, because it's a name value, you can't have spaces. You'll find if you did something like long sword, it's gonna go ahead and condense it. So that's it. That's your basics of your get data table row node. It's gonna take in a fixed data table. It's gonna take in a row name from that data table. It's going to output if it finds a row or not as execute wires. And if it finds something, it's going to have a structure which contains all the data that's inside your data table for the row that you input. 